Because if his name is Keith Johnson, then the Dean of Mean makes no sense. Everyone loves a one-hit wonder, whether it's Buster Douglas shocking the world or men without hats and their safety dance, so it should come as no surprise that the UFC looks to embrace its flash-in-the-pan stars. There's a list of fighters who picked up one big win in their career, but despite their best efforts, were able to capitalise on their unexpected success. Welcome to INC, and these are the five biggest one-hit wonders in UFC history. Number 5. Keith Jardine The Dean of Mean, Keith Jardine, is known for two things. One, for having the best nickname in all of combat sports, and a high-profile win that launched him into the UFC big time. Prior to September 2007, Jardine enjoyed a moderately successful career, amassing a record of 13 wins and 3 losses, including with his biggest triumph coming against Forrest Griffin at UFC 66. Following a first round defeat to Houston Alexander, Jardine was given the opportunity of a lifetime when he stepped in as a short notice replacement to take on Chuck Liddell at UFC 76. The fight was Liddell's first since losing the light heavyweight title to Rampage Jackson, as expected to be an easy warm up designed to launch the Iceman into championship contention. Jardine, however, wasn't reading the script, pummeling Liddell's side with repeated body kicks and even dropping Liddell with a right hook early in the second round. Jardine had Liddell covered throughout the three-round fight, going on to claim a split decision win and turning the Montana native into a top contender for the championship. Sadly, the win over Liddell would prove to be the pinnacle of Jardine's career, going 1-6 and six in his next seven fights while developing a reputation for one of the weakest chins in the sport. After announcing his retirement in 2012, Jardine would then turn his attention to acting, appearing in the likes of Crank, Gamer and Breaking Bad, where, once again, his chin would be called into question. Number 4. Dennis Holman Dennis Holman may be considered a cheat by some, but if the Macarena was re-released in 2017, nobody would be calling it a second masterpiece. Making his debut in 1996, Holman's MMA career got off to an explosive start, claiming wins in his first 12 fights, including a first round win over a young rookie by the name of Matt Hughes. Two years later, Holman and Hughes would square off once again in the undercard of UFC 29. Hughes had shrugged off his first defeat to emerge as one of the UFC's most exciting welterweight prospects, with two years of training under his belt, surely lightning wouldn't strike twice. Yeah, of course it did. Why else is he in this video? But Hughes is in trouble. His arm's in trouble. Holman's got him in an arm bar. Oh, oh my that's goodness. Gonna do it. How does that happen? Two slams, and it's over. And it's over because that man has flipped his way to victory. It took just 20 seconds for Holman to submit Hughes by arm bar in the first round, dating the star of the Militich protege and turning Holman into one of the sport's biggest names overnight. Holman used his newfound stardom to earn a shot at the lightweight title, losing to Jens Pulver by unanimous decision, before embarking on a journeyman career competing in MMA promotions around the world. Holman returned to the UFC full-time in 2010, but his time with the company will be best remembered for his choice of attire in a match with Brian Ebersol at UFC 133. The less said about that, the better. There are only three bonuses tonight. Tito, Rashad for fight of the night, and then Vitor for the knockout of the night. That's it, there were no more bonuses. I gave him that bonus for getting that off television as fast as possible, and that's the truth. Holman holds a 50-20 record in MMA and hasn't fought since 2015. Number three, Gabriel Gonzaga. It's amazing the amount of respect that Gabriel Gonzaga has in MMA. People to this day consider him an upper end fighter with a great career to his name, thanks in part to one swing of the hip back in April 2007. A former judo prospect, Gonzaga made his UFC debut in November 2005, winning his first three matches with the promotion and earning himself a match at UFC 70 against MMA legend Mirko Krokop. Krokop had just signed with the UFC after spending the last six years competing in Japan, with his fight with Gonzaga intended as a warm-up ahead of a match with Randy Couture for the heavyweight title. During his career, Krokop earned a reputation for finishing his opponents with a savage head kick, so many in the Manchester crowd weren't prepared for what would happen next. Merkel looks tentative though. Oh! Krokop had suffered knockout defeats before in his career, but none with the level of speed and ferocity demonstrated by Gonzaga, 
and launching the unheralded of Brazilian into the immediate title contention. Gonzaga used the win to earn a title shot against heavyweight champion Randy Couture, losing to the natural in the third round, before embarking on a run of form that saw him claim just eight wins over the next ten years. In 2015, Gonzaga and Krokop squared off again at Fight Night 64, where Krokop managed to extract his revenge with a TKO victory in the third round. Gonzaga announced his retirement in 2016 with a record of 17 wins and 11 losses. Number 2. Matt Sower For many old school fans, Matt Sower remains the benchmark that all one-hit wonders are judged, so consider him somewhat to be the Johan Packenbell of MMA. Throughout the majority of his career, Serra was a journeyman figure in the UFC, massing a record of 8 wins and 4 losses, with his biggest result being a narrow defeat to BJ Penn at UFC 39. In 2007, Serra was one of 16 fighters chosen to compete on the fourth season of The Ultimate Fighter, defeating Pete Spratt, Shoney Carter and Chris Lytle to earn himself a title shot against welterweight champion George St. Pierre. GSB was expected to dominate the fight at UFC 69, but Serra had other ideas, landing a looping right that rocked the champion and maintaining the pressure for the remainder of the fight. Good Lord! He's hurt him three times in the last 60 seconds! Sadly for Serra, the victory would mark the beginning of a sudden decline. A herniated disc in his lower back forced him out of action for over a year, before losing his title to GSB in a one-sided rematch at UFC 83. After retiring from the sport in 2013, Serra still remains involved with the UFC, presenting the promotion's weekly podcast while cementing his place as one of the company's most popular and colourful figures. Let me ask you something. Just scroll, go down for a second. What are those? British Knights? No, the Nike? Yeah. Look at that. Nike SBs, baby. Unbelievable, man. And number one, Holly Holm. As an active fighter still competing with the UFC, Holm's inclusion on this list is a controversial one, but no other fighter in the company's 20-year history has ever risen and fallen as dramatically as the preacher's daughter in 2015. An 18-time boxing champion, Holm turned her attention to MMA in the summer of 2011, signing for the UFC four years later, where she quickly earned decision wins over Raquel Pennington and Marion Renew. Despite her inexperience, the lack of depth in the women's division led Holm to receive a title opportunity, taking on bantamweight champion Ronda Rousey in the main event of UFC 193. Rousey was long considered the dominant force in MMA, and with Holm looking less than convincing in her first two fights, there was little reason to believe that this would be any different. Holm, however, would put in a masterful performance, neutralising Rousey's takedown offence while exposing her stand-up game with headshots throughout the first round. It takes a lot of energy to be a rock star. Well, right now, Holly's taking a lot. She's getting punched in the face and has nothing to do with being a rock star. She's getting lit up. The onslaught continued in the second, with Holm avoiding all of Rousey's offense before creating the most infamous gif in the history of the sports. Beautiful. Can she Beautiful. She's hurt. She's hurt. She's hurt. She's hurt. Holmes' win granted the 33-year-old an instant celebrity unlike anything seen in the sport. Open-top bus parades were held in her honour. Irish fans serenaded her at UFC 194, while lightweight champion John Jones described her as the greatest female fighter in all of combat sports. Sadly, Holmes' fall from grace would prove to be just as dramatic, losing in her first title defence to Rousey's old foe Misha Tate, before suffering a one-sided defeat to Valentina Shevchenko three months later. Holm received a second title shot at UFC 208, when she took on Jermaine Durandame for the company's inaugural featherweight championship, losing in a controversial decision 48 points to 47. In the space of a year, Holm went from being the toast of MMA's finest to a figure of ridicule amongst many fans, and this, added with the profile of her win, makes her the biggest one-hit wonder in UFC history. Well, that's what we think, but what about yourself? Who do you consider to be the biggest flash in the pan in UFC history? Be sure to post your comments, like this video and stay tuned to this channel. This is the INC and thank you for watching.